Hi guys and welcome to Honey and Me. I'm Susan and this is my little RV named Honey. If you're watching this, I didn't die. I survived. What did I survive? Well, I survived installing USB plugs in the RV with no prior experience. If I can do it, so can you. And I'm going to show you how to do it right now. If you're new to the channel and you haven't subscribed, if you look down there, there's a subscribe button. You can hit that button and you'll be subscribed. If you hit the notification bell, you'll be notified the next time we release a video. Also, if you look down here, there's a like button. You can give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and we really appreciate it. So today we're going to be doing two things. We're going to be installing new lights as well as USB outlets in the RV. I've installed all new 12 volt LED lights in Honey, except for one back up here, which is an over the bed reading light. It's the remaining original light fixture left in Honey. But today we're going to replace it with something new and fancy. This is how these lights came in these really cool cardboard tubes that you can use for stuff afterwards. They're really cool. The light itself is quite small. This is the new light we're going to be installing. I have two of these, so I'm going to put one above the bed as a reading lamp, but I'm also going to install one somewhere else, and I haven't quite decided where the best place to put it will be. I'm going to install this one first and see what kind of light it casts, and then decide where I want that light. So this one's going to be the first thing we do. The cool thing about this particular light is it also has a USB plug-in on the side, which will be really handy when I need to charge my phone at night or my Kindle. The other thing we're going to be installing and that is something new to me and that I have had to do some research on to make sure that I'm doing it right are USB plug-ins. This is a two outlet one. It has a has covers on the outside, but this one has a cigarette lighter plug-in as well as two USB plug-ins. I actually have two just like this and then one that's slightly different, which I can't find at the moment. I don't know where it went, but it's here somewhere. But these ones, I had wanted to install one underneath the cupboards above the table and the other one under the sofa bed next to the electrical box. The wiring for the one under the sofa should be fairly straightforward because somebody at some point installed a very long cord going to a cigarette lighter and what I'm going to be doing is just changing that out to be a plug-in. But I'll show you all of this as we work through this project. First, let's start with the light over the bed. The first thing I need to do is make sure there's no power going to that light over there. So I'm going to be pulling fuses until that light goes out. Time to remove the light. On this one we have a black and a white wire. Coming out of the RV we have a green and a purple wire. The caps on this one are on really tight so I'm just going to cut the wires. So this new light came with a couple of little screws and a Allen wrench to undo the base from here. It only took a couple of turns to get the base free from here. So I'm going to install this on first. So first we're going to put the ring on over top of the wires. I'm obviously going to have to do some touch-up painting here. So that's on there. Now we're going to connect the wires and I'm going to strip off a little bit off there first. This light didn't come with caps but I have two here to attach them with. So now I've got the wires attached. 
but I want to make sure that this is actually hooked up before I close everything up. So I'm going to go and plug the fuse back in and hopefully this will light up. So now we have a light that works and I'm going to tape the connectors right here with some black tape just to make sure they're nice and sealed in there and they're not going to come undone going down the road. So there is the light all hooked up and I'm going to show you how it works. You just push the little button there. You don't actually push it, you just touch it and the little blue light will come on and touch it again and the light comes on and then you touch it again and it goes off. Touch it, touch it, light comes on and then you can also touch it and hold it and the light gets brighter and dimmer. So it's got a little dimming switch on it as well. So I installed that one above the bed here and I also installed one beside the bed. There's the new light above the sofa bed but it's right beside the bed. You can see there's the other light over there and I took out this light which is a little um, it's quite a dim light but it has a little button in the middle that you push to make it on and off and I replaced this particular one which was an old light with this one when I first got honey and I'll show you over here is the other one and you just touch it there it's a nice soft light for in the evening and when you turn it off you can see the button glows which is kind of cool so I took off the one over here and replaced it with that one and then we have two USB plug-ins right by the bed there so when my husband and I are both in here and we both need to charge our phones we can have them charged and close at hand at night so that works really well now we're going to get on with installing those USB outlets which I have been doing so much research on and I think I'm ready to tackle it so let's do it what you can see here is my electrical panel what I am trying to do is I want to install the USB right over here so I've removed the two plugs from the back plate and I'm going to use the back plate to mark where I want to drill the holes so I'm checking behind here to make sure there's nothing back here that the plug is going to interfere with So I'm using a one inch hole saw to drill the hole. Okay, so that's one. But now my plate will fit on there nicely. Then I'll be putting these back in and screwing the ring on from behind to hold the plugs in place. I've made it so that the caps come down and that way they'll be out of the way when I need to plug things in and not having to lift them up or interfering with each other as well. So I'm not going to put the screws into the plate because the whole thing is held together by pressure from the rings in the back here and I'll show you what it looks like from the back. There are the two plugs. I'm sorry the light's not great. So this is the the cigarette lighter side and that's the USB plug side. This is the great big long wire that goes to this cigarette lighter outlet. I need to figure out what's powering this very long wire to the cigarette outlet so I can shut it off because I need to cut this wire right over here so it can go into the back and connect it to these two sockets. So I figured out how to shut the power off to this wire by taking the fuse out and I've cut the two wires 
and I've stripped the end of them so I'm ready to make my new connections. This particular socket set came with just these four connectors which if you look in here, if I can do this one-handed, you can see it's kind of an oval shape and it fits on top of the, they look like like a, a regular 110 plug-in type of connector on the back and they fit on top of that connector like so and so what I need to do is get the wires into the hole there and crimp it so it will connect on there from the ends of the wires. I've got them all connected up and what I've done is gotten from the, the negative wire here with the green wires to the negative post here and the negative post here and then same thing with the positive is down here and positive here from the positive wire. So pretty simple plan and I will now put the fuse back in and we'll see if it all works. And once I know it all works then I'm going to tape all of these up with some black tape as well just to make sure they stay anchored. These little blue fittings that came with the sockets are not the best quality and I really had to uh, clamp this one. You can see there's a few uh, crimps in there because the wire going in tends to push the little metal piece out the other end. So they're not the best quality. So if you're going to be doing this, I would get some extra ones of these for this particular kind of socket that has the little prongs on the back. I had to use the set from the other set of sockets that I have, so I'm only going to be able to go so far with this project today, and I'm going to have to make a trip down to the automotive store to get some more of those. But in the meantime, let's test it out. The fuse is back in and the little blue light is on, which means that it's all hooked up properly. And this one is good to go. I'm just going to add some black tape to those connections to make sure everything stays together. And this one's done. The other place I wanted to mount a USB plug-in was underneath the cabinet here. So this cabinet here is above the table and it's where we installed the light in one of my videos which I will link right up there. There's a 110 outlet here and then here are the connectors for the antenna or cable. So what I want to do is I want to install the USB plugins back here and if we look into the cupboard I've already removed all the stuff from the cupboard and pried up the base to the cupboard and I've also taken out there's a, a piece of paneling that goes here that covers up this whole area back here and you can see all the wires. What I'm wanting to do is tie, and I'm sorry the light isn't great in here, is tie the USB outlets into the existing wiring to start with, I'm going to drill the holes in the cabinet base to put the plug-ins in first. And I'm going to have to run downtown tomorrow because it's too late today to get them and get some more of those um, connectors for the posts that are on the back of the outlets. So here are the markings I've made using the back plate as a template for the holes. And I'm going to grab my drill and we'll cut those out. Just going to use the washers that come with it to tighten them on the back. So I've spun them around so the caps fall to the back and don't make it so you can't see where you're plugging things in. So I will tighten that up nice and tight now that they are in the position that I want them to be in. So I made my trip to Lordco, which is the automotive supply place here, and I picked up some new parts. I needed to get these, which are the shovel connectors, and I got them bigger than what I would need for just the one wire because I thought I might have to use them 
for uh, daisy chaining the connection. So I got them so I could actually fit two wires into that side of the connector. And then this part fits over top of the prong or the male end of the shovel connector. So these are the female ends. So there are two on each plug. So I have four altogether. And this is the positive wire and the negative wire and negative wire and positive wire there. And they're going to come from positive and the negative wire that is feeding the lights and the speaker up in the cupboard. What I picked up originally were these things, but smaller. What these do is they actually make it so you don't have to cut the wire. They clamp onto the wire and I'll show you how that works. I can fit two wires into this side and then this side, which you can see goes all the way through, clamps onto the existing wire and then I will put the two ends of the, the green ground wire here into this one, which will feed the negative posts on the outlets. So I'll put this all together and then show you exactly how it works. So first I'm stripping all the ends of the wires off. You don't normally need to strip the wires off for these kind of connectors because this little metal tab here on the top actually presses down into the wire and cuts through the plastic coating that's on the wire. But because I'm putting two wires into the butt end one, so the metal bar pushes down into both the wires and connects them without having to cut the continuous wire that you're butting into. But because I'm putting two wires into one side, I want to strip them because I want to make sure that they're both connected. I'm not sure if this would actually cut into both of the wires. So just to be sure, I'm actually removing the plastic coating from the wires that are going to go in here. So there's my two negatives all stripped and my two positives stripped. And I'm just going to twist the wires together on the end just to keep them neater. So now I'm going to attach the shovel connectors to the ends of the wires. I like to crimp a couple of times just to make sure it's well seated in there. And then tug on the wire to make sure it's in there nice and snug and it's not going to just wiggle out. So this one's well seated in there. So now I have three more to do. So there are my four shovel connectors attached to the two negative and the two positive wires. And now I need to go into the cupboard and connect these to the existing wire. So the two negatives are going to go into one of these, like so. And the two positives will go into the other one. And they go into the end that doesn't come through. So I'm putting them in to the end where they don't come out the other side. So it's the, the dead end, I guess. And the wire that I'm going to be connecting the whole circuit to is going to go through this one. And it's just going to clamp onto that wire, cut into it enough to make a, a connection and not have to cut the wire. So I'm going to do that and I will try to show you that, but it's dark up there and I'm not sure how much light I can get in there, but we'll see what we can do. To show you what I'm dealing with here, we have the purple, which is positive, P, purple, positive, and we have the green, which is green, G, ground, and I'm going to be connecting these wires, which are going to be the negative because they're green, onto this negative wire, which is already hooked up to lights, and this part here the wire, this green wire, is going to go through that. I'm going to be doing it further along here though because this is under the cabinet and these wires need to go through here and into that back area there, which is where the plug is. You can see back there, or I hope you can see. That's the plug right back there, black. So the, the green line will be connected further along closer to where the plug is. So you can see the green wire in here and the other two green wires are going to go into 
that hole there, the empty hole. And they only go in halfway and then they stop and there's a, a actual butt there that they can't go any further. And this part here will be compressed and it will cut into this existing green wire. It will cut into the new green wires if they didn't have the plastic already removed. Um, as it is, they're just going to squish them. But I removed the wire because I wanted to make sure I had a good connection because there's two wires and not one. So this I squished down with a pair of pliers. And then this part here will bend over and clamp down around this whole area. It's like a little, little door. You can see how that clamps over and then it'll snap around the whole thing and hold it all together. So that's what I'm going to do now and then I'll show you it when it's all done. There's the one plug all hooked in there and the other one is right... I'm trying to... The other one's right there and here are the connectors for hooking the wires in. And before I tape these all up with some black tape, I'm going to put the fuse back in and make sure it works. So what we're looking for is a little blue light to come on in here when I connect the fuse back in. If that blue light doesn't come on, then I did something wrong. Yay, the little blue light's on. And the lights still work. We're all good. So now I'm going to tape everything up and put everything back together in the cupboard. Okay, so everything is taped up nice and snug and I can now put everything back together in the cupboard. Everything is back together and I can put everything back into the cupboard now and get it off of everything else. Well, I for one am glad that that project is done. I now have six USB plugins in the RV as well as two cigarette lighter ones. I need the cigarette lighter ones to plug in my inverter. If you plan on adding USB plugins to your RV, make sure you do your research. I watched a lot of YouTubes and I did a lot of reading before I felt confident enough to tackle this job on my own. I was prepared, but I was still a little nervous. You guys take care, live with joy, and we'll see you down the road. Bye!